Hello, ooh, hello to those of you watching live. Uh, welcome to jasonnewland.com. And I am just doing a Jason Chats live um, thingy. So there, that's what I'm doing. Hello to the two people that have just joined. And so, and we've got Sebastian Kinsikos on here as well. So, ba ba da ba 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 ba. I was just thinking, I can't, I can't add anyone because I can't see what gives you, what gives you that you do a live one at 3 a.m. No, it's 2 a.m. I, what I thought I would do, the reason I'm on here is I thought I would talk about how I got into hypnosis because somebody uh, asked me uh, what, you know, how I got into it and what I do. And, uh, you know, how I got into, ended up doing what I'm doing now. So I thought I would maybe give uh, an introduction to that. So yeah, that's kind of why I'm doing this. There may be a few interruptions because, uh, Sebastian, that picture you sent me, that's me, Sebastian, going like that in the background. How come the picture of you is clear and the picture of me is all blurry? That don't seem right. So, hi everyone. Um, hi Tonya. And just, can I just check, is the sound okay on here? By the way, I'm not as red as I look. I just got the sh light shining right on me. Of course, I'm not pale like anyone that knows of. I've got quite a red face anyway, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so can you just let me know if the sound is okay? Because I've got this microphone there. I feel I'm going like that with it. Uh, I bought it especially for doing live broadcasts. And let me show you something. The wire. Seriously, look. The wire between. That's how much wire I got. <sighs> Sebastian says, I hear you brilliantly and see you even more. What do you mean you see me even more? <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> the buttons are popping open. That's it. So that'll keep me, that'll keep that covered. So, um, <clears throat> oh, by the way, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, this is my recording studio. This is uh, when I do the audio. It was quite cool. Had that for about, about a year, I think, now. <sighs> So what I would thought I would do is talk about how I got into hypnosis, uh, the background behind it. So that's what my Jason Chats is going to be about today. What's that on there? I've been bombarded by flies recently. Oh, also, I've got a, a channel. I've now got a Jason Chats channel. 
on um, YouTube. What am I looking at here? You, ju you just sent me something. I'm confused. Sebastian just sent me something, it's a video. Did you send me a video? I don't know. I think it's just going to be me and you tonight, mate. Ah, that was strange. It looked like a, a YouTube video had just come in. Uh, so hello to all the new people come in and go in. Um, this is Jason Chats. It's just a vlog. Occasionally I'll do a live one on Facebook via by request. But to be fair, most people want me to do it a bit earlier. Oh, Sebastian's leaving lots of wow and random remarks. So, I wanted to talk about how I got into hypnosis. So, oh, this, if you can hear the noise of the laptop, it's getting really noisy. should close down now yeah that's it oh it's quiet good so I got into hypnosis back in January 1998 and the tail end of 1997 or during 97 I've been very ill with uh, depression and had a lot happen some family stuff uh, very serious stuff happened and um, in the last three months of 90, 1997 I got into a lot of um, self-help books and self-help audio tapes things like that and then it just progressed and I, I was buying lots of books and then in 98 January there was a couple of hypnosis books that I'd been looking at but not bought, but looking at them, you know, just like, oh, shall I, shall I? And I ended up buying them, buying both these books. And I didn't look at them probably for a few weeks. And then, you know, I decided to give one of them a read. And from there, I got involved uh, just more of it in an intellectual way, really, with hypnosis, started studying it. Um, then I found out about NLP, New Orleans Linguistic Programming, that I hadn't heard about before. Started reading books on that. And I went to a training course on NLP at City University uh, back in, yeah, it was 98, 1998. So I went there, it was in the evenings, a Tuesday or Thursday, something like that. And it was just only a few of us, there's maybe 10, 12 people in the class. And we were just taught the basics of NLP, we used to practice on each other, things like that. Learned the, you know, things like anchoring, um, just very, the elements, I guess, of it. Then in, so I bought more books on NLP, uh, started, buying DVDs, well actually I used to rent them, so I used to rent DVDs uh, from a place called, I think it was Anglo-Saxon uh, Publishing or some place, I used to rent them uh, and in fact it might not even, it might have been a video in fact, back then probably was a video and I used to watch them and it would be uh, Richard Bandler and I'd watch his It'd be like doing a lecture or it'd be doing a seminar or a course and I'll be watching them. Some of them were from the early 80s, late 70s even. Then I did my practitioner and master practitioner training in NLP in 1999. 
and then I did a I love that it was brilliant uh, I actually made quite a good friend that lived in Wales and I ended up helping him out a little bit with a NLP course that he was starting so I'll take a little bit I would I will break from what I'm saying just to acknowledge the comments also Sebastian you're aware of the um, I said anchoring oh yeah okay so you know you know a bit about NLP as well and uh, Claire says how come you're doing this so late you should write a book thank you um, the reason I'm doing it so late is because I'm awake uh, I don't mean that rudely I'm not just because I'm just <sighs> I'm awake so I thought I might as well just do it because earlier I was watching telly and I wasn't really sort of in the mood you know but I thought I'd do it and then I'll, I'll, I'll post it onto YouTube as well uh, download it post it onto YouTube on my Jason Chats channel vlog channel I'll also put it onto my website so people can download or stream it uh, and then people on Facebook can watch it later if they want to so I realize I'm not going to get a lot of people watching this time apart from maybe people in America uh, other countries Australia maybe um, also I don't give much notice that I'm coming on here if I did then I'll get more people sort of waiting for me to come on but I'm not great at organizing that stuff sometimes and you also said uh, Sebastian stop writing loads of comments I'm trying to read the comments that I had there I can't reach the screen uh, Claire so you should write a book thank you I'm actually thinking of writing a book but I think my ideal situation would be to have somebody that writes books to because all my audios of all my stuff hundreds of hours maybe thousands of hours of me talking but to go through those and to uh, find stuff that's worthy to be put into a book then to kind of edit it and to sort of take my words but then edit it into a decent book with me that makes sense and kind of as a as a joint thing but uh, I think I'm probably someone that purposely because of the hypnosis and the, the boring stuff I do I do use like you know when someone says that you use three words when one would do I use like probably 200 words when one would do so I, I do use a lot of words but that's all part of that I can't see what you're writing Sebastian you keep writing um, Sebastian says because JJ and I are weird and slept all well I did sleep all day well not all day I slept till 2 and then I I went back to bed and slept again till about 5 or 6 but I'm, I'm awake till about 6 in the morning so although I'll finish this at 3 I've still got 3 hours where I'll chill out and um, I'll get back uh, you know I, I might make another session or work on my website Sebastian says at least I did brain goes bonkers at the moment I'll be honest with you about an hour ago I had, I had something to eat like a proper cooked dinner cooked myself pie potatoes veg, vegetables and everything and I was sitting on my chair and I was feeling I, I like I dipped really dipped like really proper um, low mood and I, I couldn't figure out why and then uh, after about an hour and a half I kind of felt alright again so that's why I'm here uh, that's why Facebook is no good for doing this at the moment you need to get comments to be shown in the stream it does show in the stream it does show on as comments at the end of it but just I can't I'm doing this on a little phone don't forget so I can't I'm trying to see it because the the phone is the other side of the table so I'm, I'm just trying to read what it says 
uh, Claire says, can you help with people who have food eating problems as I eat when sad and overweight? I've got, I think I've got two sessions uh, for food, I think. If you go to my website, jasonnewland.com, so it's www.jasonnewland.com, and just, there's a search bar on the left-hand side. Just put in search, food, um, yeah, I think there was two. I think I did one for drink as well. I've done a couple for drugs. So I think there's, there's a couple of food ones there, uh, overeating or eating issues. Um, but if there's a, a specific thing, I might be able to do something sort of to cater for what, you're, what you need personally. But it's, um, it's, I'm full of good intentions, but I don't always have the, uh, I, I wish that I could do a session for every single person, personally, online, you know, but I know it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, but, you know, practically, but I'm happy to try and do something if the ones I've got aren't sufficient for your needs. Uh, and I'm hoping, at the moment I'm trying to get the website more organized, more, it's still work to be done, but I'm happy with how it is. Everything that I've got available is like 800 or whatever, MP3s, 400 videos available that you can stream online on my website or you can download for free. Um, so I'm kind of still working on that but I'm still trying to make new sessions every day as well so it's, it's kind of a thing it's a I'm sorry it's an ongoing process Andrea so that's Boston Chicky says hi it's Andrea Dematia Dematia sorry Andrea I'm not, I'm not ignoring anyone I'm just trying to um, answer the, the comments as they come in because I don't want to ignore comments, which is fair enough, I think. Um, and Sebastian, I don't mind ignoring some of his. <laughs> it's just because me and him contact each other anyway, pretty much every day. Uh, so it's any anything I don't comment on here, it'll be. He'll, I'm sure he'll if it's if he doesn't get the answer, he will contact me. Claire, emotional eating is a comfort thing. Okay, so. I'll leave that because that's for Claire. Um, also, food is a response to being unhappy with her weight. There's so many different reasons, to be fair. The, the problem uh, that I discovered as a therapist is it's very easy to get into that human cycle of just saying, this is the reason for this thing. But actually, that's we've got no knowledge of your situation and the only way you know you know your situation and why you perhaps why you do what you do or maybe eat at times that you perhaps don't want to eat and um, whether it's comfort eating whether it's you know I've got a thing at the moment I haven't got an eating issue I haven't got an eating disorder at all what I do have though is sometimes I kind of give up on, I look at myself and as I talk to you, my belly is popping out of this shirt, but I'm covering it up because I don't think it's fair to let anyone see that. And it feels very uncomfortable, I'm very constricted in this, this is too tight, it's not a, it's like extra large believe it or not, but it's still too tight on me. Um, but when I'm like that, when I look at myself, I think, well, I kind of give, I just, I'll have some ice cream then, I'll have some chocolate. Because I think the worst thing about wanting to lose weight, if that's what you're looking for, but I've noticed the worst thing about it, it it's not instant. And we're living in a world that's instant. Everything's instant now. You the internet, download something instantly. Uh, you can watch whatever you want to watch. You don't, you don't even have to wait until next week to see the next edition. You can watch the whole box set all in one go, you know? 
and <laughs> Andrew says change your shirt if you can, I'll, I'll change it on a camera and then you'll change your mind and you'll say keep it on keep it on uh, Sebastian says something about me bomb bombarding me with his great thoughts daily he bombards me with weird pictures but not only weird pictures but weird pictures that let me tell you about Sebastian I've never known anybody that can find he can find the weirdest stuff online the weirdest unusual most unusual and I'm not this is not an invitation to post anything here please don't but he comes up with <laughs> Andrea knows it's he comes up with the most on YouTube find stuff that I would never know even existed or finds a website that I would never known even he found a website that was specifically seemed to be specifically for let's say for example um, gay moustaches like a website devoted to gay men who who have particular dis moustaches and they're all posing pictures and it's kind of like a group and it's like how does he how does he find that stuff I don't know but um, yeah, so I think when it comes to weight loss, for me, all I have to do really is just work out, go to the gym. I don't have to change my eating habits really. I could probably do with drinking less Coke. But I don't drink alcohol. Uh, don't do really much anything else so it's, it's something I could do with getting rid of but at the moment uh, I like drinking coke but it's not good if you want to lose weight but yeah so um, anytime that I've got into any uh, serious working out like when I did boxing any kind of martial arts anything like that where I'm just sweating really hard for an hour and a half or whatever I end up losing weight and getting slimmer and sometimes I don't even seem to be losing weight but my, my belly gets flatter you know so yeah that's uh, but I don't do hypnosis sessions telling people to go to the gym or anything like that that's not um, that's not my place to be doing stuff like that but it is what Sebastian is saying all fabrications lies it was a website for gay guys in their 50s in speedos actually yeah to be fair it was it was <laughs> and I enjoyed it I did enjoy it I found it very funny it's just it's the way it was presented was joyful it was wasn't it you got to admit that it was it was very joyful <laughs> it's like the 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 free abandonment of happiness that was there um, so yeah it's been a weird few days here uh, as I suppose Sebastian knows a couple of people uh, basically I won't go into details but the a friend of mine was attacked and ser very seriously seriously attacked it was basically attempted murder and he's in hospital he survived it but um, it was just outside where I live so it was a little bit um, kind of scary but okay so um, Claire I'm wheelchair bound and on meds that put weight on then I have lots of personal issues I'm just going to press to see what. I have lots of personal issues and then turn to food for something nice for me. So I can actually relate to that. I know it's probably not any use for you for me to say oh, I kind of relate to it. The, the gaining weight bit, uh, I'm on medication for bipolar and the medication has put weight on me a bit. Not huge amounts but I'd say probably added a, another stone uh, on, on top of my normal weight. 
Um, but then there's the, the lack of wanting to get up and do stuff as well, which probably hasn't helped. And I comfort eat, I do. Um, chocolate, bars of chocolate. This is comfort eating, it's comfort drinking. Uh, drinking Coke. So yeah, I do, and if you go back to the uh, psychoanalysis, they'd start talking about it's an oral fixation, and if you if you put anything in your mouth, then it's due to uh, you know going back, you weren't breastfed for long enough, and that kind of stuff. But there's comfort, you know. The one thing I would say to anybody is be kind to yourself. And that's, that's something that was said to me when I was very, very low back, you know, I was struggling back in 2002, 2003, and a friend, like a new friend said to me, be kind to yourself. It's just being kind to ourselves, it's doing something that, that allows you to feel good, even if it is just for a short period of time, is a nice thing to do for yourself, but it's not always healthy. So being kind to yourself isn't necessarily a healthy thing. So it, it might not be kind long term, but if it helps you get through that period of time, yeah, and uh, as Andrea says, moderation, but if it gets, if it gets you through the night, if it gets you through that difficult period, then I say eat as much ice cream as you need to, if it gets you through. Um, so yeah, it's, but then it's, the thing that worries me, and I know I'm bringing it back to myself because I can only uh, talk from my own experience, is I've had a few breaks, bones break and stuff. I fell out of the bath. Uh, a couple of years ago, broke my wrist. I broke my hand about in April, I think, this year. Uh, I broke my foot a few years back. And I think, you know, if I broke, if I broke my knee or done something like that, or damaged myself so I couldn't do the exercise, then I, I would be concerned about what I would be able to do, what to to lose the weight or to keep the weight down. I know there is exercise you can do, there's upper body exercise. Uh, I've got a friend that has been in a wheelchair since he was about 19, he's now probably 50, 55, 56. And he's, he's, like a lot up, he's, he's very strong physically, but he's, he does a lot of upper body stuff. But it's all down to what you can do and not beating yourself up for what you can't do. So if you can't do physical exercise because you're unwell or you can't physically do it, then that's just that. It's, it's, it's finding a way to be kind to yourself, but not just being kind to yourself, but think kindly towards yourself. Does that make sense? To a point that maybe you don't need to eat more than is necessary if you can feel good anyway. Because all those feelings that you get from whatever it is, smoking, alcohol, drugs, coffee, caffeine, chocolate, exercise, all those you know, feelings that we get can be experienced without any of that stuff. Because all that is a trigger. It's just a trigger and it's triggering that chemical response in our brain. And so, if you remember a time when you felt good, just by thinking about it, whether it's sitting there eating some chocolate or whatever, you can have that feeling back. And that's in a sense how hypnosis works, is remembering something that's happened and or thinking about something and what you'd like to happen. You know, it's just like fantasizing. Do you know, um, thanks Claire, and Sebastian, I'm not ignoring you, by the way. I'll, I will come to you in a second. One of my favorite things to do is fantasize that I've won the lottery. 
uh, I don't do it much and it's usually when I'm in bed and I don't even do the lottery I don't I don't do it but I fantasize about winning the huge amounts of money and all the different people I could help and like family members and what I could do with that money and I just imagine giving my dad like a million pounds or giving even cousins and people from the past that have helped me and maybe I don't even see them anymore just or old employees or people that I worked with and just go to them you know and say here here's a gift and so I kind of and that feels good I haven't won a, I've not won the lottery though and I'm not saying it feels like I've won the lottery because there's a big difference between me laying in bed imagining and actually having someone hand me uh, you know 70 million pound check or 70 million dollars but the feeling's nice it's a nice feeling so yeah I'm not sure I hope that made a little bit of sense some of it uh, so you can change how you feel but it doesn't have to be forced it can be done in a nice way in a kind way so you can be kind to yourself but Maybe think about things, because uh, you know, I know that there's times when I, I think about things that I regret, and I feel crappy. It works the same way if you think about things that, are, that you're really pleased that you did, that you really uh, feel grateful for. Whether it's a family member, whether it's a grandchild, nephew, niece, parents, your wife, husband, your pet. The thing I feel most grateful for is Andre, my ferret, especially when he's asleep. Sebastian says, if you'd win the big jackpot, <laughs> he said that he'd marry me out of love in the big, big things. Okay. Sebastian, if I won the jackpot, you would never be able to find me. <laughs> you would never be able to find me. You know, so it's weird. I think if I won the lottery, I'd still want to do what I'm doing. That's the that's the problem. Is it's not a problem, but I'd do it on a best. I'd do it on a bigger scale, and I'd have money behind it. So all the things I did would be publicised, and I'd have a recording studio. You know what I mean? I'd have proper cameras, perhaps a camera person operating the camera, and it'd all be, you know, so it wouldn't be me sitting behind a a table that I with an iPhone the other side of the table so things would change that way but the difference is I'd have money at the moment I, I don't have any money I, I'm you know so I'm doing it I'm doing what I love doing but it's just you know if I had the money then I could just promote it more that may but I would take a holiday not abroad, but I'd take a holiday, probably just go and stay stay somewhere like in a, in a health a health farm or something like that. Just get a little bit healthy for three months. Maybe. So Sebastian says uh, Sebastian thinks I'd give him fifty percent. No. I'd I'd I would help anyone out that I could financially if I had the money so I suppose in a way I am doing uh, I'm using my money to pay for you know all the different websites and podcasts and all the stuff that I do I use whatever spare money I have after paying the bills for that to do this so in a sense Sebastian I am spending you're getting more than 50% of what I've got. Because if you had 50% of what I got, that would amount to about, at the last count, about 65 pound. That's how much you'd have. The last I, I looked at my account, I had 130 pound. And it's probably less in there now because I've always got stuff coming out. So yeah, you better be quick because 
by Monday it'll be less. It'll probably be down to, your share will probably be about 25 pound. So, I was talking about my, talking about my website. Okay, Sebastian J, let me tell you from experience, getting the big bucks is useful, but it may not as Well, maybe not necessarily improve your life. Well, you know what, I had, uh, I went 10 months while I was waiting for my benefits to come through and I was living on about 20 pound a week. And my benefits came through and I got it backdated. And this was in probably November. And uh, suddenly I had uh, 3,000 pound in the bank. And I felt rich, I felt absolutely rich. And I was careful with it, I didn't spend it all. I just bought a few clothes that I needed. It was winter, so I needed a new winter coat. Uh, bought a few books, but I didn't, you know, I didn't sort of go spending it. I went, I paid off some debts, but I still had my, you know, I still had some money there. And then my nan died, and I basically spent nearly everything after she died on stuff that I didn't even do. I paid it for courses online, like hypnosis courses that I paid for that I didn't attend. Uh, so that was about two thousand pounds, nearly, probably on that. But between that, two about two thousand pounds in all on some courses, different things, an online course which is about seven hundred, uh, a stand-up comedy course which is about three hundred and fifty. So I bought all this stuff, thinking I think it was like a distraction, and I ended up not attending any of it and not being able to get any of the money back. So yeah, it was. It would have been better for me to have used that money for counselling, something that would, would have helped me. So yeah, so it didn't, um, it didn't help at all really. But luckily I had a little bit left and I moved into my new flat I had enough to get a washing machine and a cooker, a fridge, and uh, then I had to, yeah, I needed to get, a, yeah, so it cost quite a bit of money when I moved in here, a new carpet, a new bed, and all that stuff. Okay, Andrew, she's, you gotta go, see you later, bye. So let me tell you about Andrea, I got a lot of gossip. She's gone now. She's got the biggest feet ever. They're like about size 15, twice the size. They're like uh, duck's feet. Oh, oh, oh I, thought, I thought you'd gone. Uh, bye, see ya. I don't think she heard. <laughs> ducks, they're honestly, they're like, they're the size, they're, her feet are the size of a swimming pool. <laughs> They're not really. See you later. When she has gone, we'll really talk about her. Just wait. <laughs> I wonder if you can watch anonymously. What Sebastian says, what I learned from the money thing is every buck just must have a purpose. Well, now I'm in a situation which I know you're in as well. Yeah, I don't I don't need to buy things the way I used to. I don't have that need to buy things or that want. Um I've got a TV. Everything I do really in my life is about the free hypnosis stuff I do. That's pretty much my life. So I've got a laptop, to, I've got equipment to do that with, some stuff that I had to save up for, like my my lovely recording studio thing, the various microphones, cameras, different things like that. But 
I haven't bought any clothing apart from some underwear and maybe some sweatpants or tracksuit bottoms. That's all I've bought in, in the way of clothing for the last probably three years, maybe two years. Apart from, no, I bought this and a pair of uh, trousers um, in September last year. See, I can remember the exact, it was a Saturday in September, just before about the 21st of September. And I get by. Just buy food, pay bills. That's, that's all I've got money for, really. And that's okay. But I've got a TV, I've got the internet. I have to have the internet for doing this stuff, stuff that I do online. So um, if I didn't do this stuff online, I'd probably get rid of the internet, to be fair. Because that would save me a nice little bit of money every month. But then I've got Netflix, but that's monthly. I can choose to have it or not have it. Uh, so, Dal hi, Dalton. Um, so it's so going back. As I said, I had what was I talking about before? And a girl, <laughs> no, I haven't got a golden tracksuit. Ah, oh, it's amazing how many people keep come on here for like thirty seconds and then leave. I don't know what they were expecting. Which is like, what would we, I don't know, if, maybe I should do some juggling or something. But, uh, no, I've got no pink, pink lemon, lemon glasses. So the hypnosis. So I've got those two books and I did the training in 99. I did uh, an intensive training course in hypnosis. It was really good. Again, this was in London. And it was with a man called Michael Breen. Uh, he's very, very good. He's all part of the. He's part of the Richard, um, part of Richard Bandler group, and Paul McKenna. So I did all that, and then I. Still kept buying books. I don't have the library I once had, but I had a really, really good hypnosis library quite a few rare books as well um, but I don't have them anymore but so much stuff is available to just download for free online and also so much of the stuff in books is just repeated it's just it which for me works but at the same time it's a little bit boring as well it's is sometimes it's explained a little bit differently, which helps for me because then I see it from a different angle. So, ah, oh, okay. And it cements it a bit more, reminds me of something that I used to know and had maybe not thought about for quite a while. Uh, oh yeah, Sebastian says, they expect me to be with a pendulum going like that. Um, obviously I'd need a pendulum because it doesn't work with an invisible one wouldn't really work. My pendulum is my voice, my boring voice. So I didn't. Um, I did a bit of hypnosis with. I actually, I'm not. I don't feel I've ever told anyone this. In probably it was 1999. I decided to put on a week long course in transforming your life to help people with like phobias that, or things like that the whole idea is so that they felt a lot better at the end of the week than they did before and I was going to charge a hundred pound well I, that's what I charged a hundred pound uh, and I was aiming to get a hundred people I had a venue everything sorted and uh I had one person turn up, so I advertised it. One person turned up, so I did. I, I saw her. I said, "Well, don't pay nothing, and I'll just see you for an hour, and we'll do a session." And she said that what we did was really useful. So that was my first uh, step into sort of trying to be a therapist. Claire says, "I'd love to learn self hypnosis." I was told it's the same as taking yourself to a nice place in 
in your mind yeah um, I've got um, a few of my sessions especially the the more recent ones I've been doing daily hypnosis 2018 that might be something that you might like to listen to or watch it's uh, I've done nine of them and they last between half an hour and an hour long but there's a lot of talk about going to a safe place a lot of talk about safety and it's it's a shared experience it's you we're sharing that experience and I'm not guiding you in a sense of do this do that this is what you're gonna see this is what you're gonna hear it's about you having your own experience and uh, us kind of me telling you perhaps what I see or what you may see or what, or you know what you may experience or what I experience so it gives you the freedom to just experience what you do naturally and safety is very much at the front of this it's very much the focus and uh, so that, that might be something you might, Claire, that you might find useful. Uh, I enjoy doing them actually because I find myself getting really involved in them emotionally when I do them. Uh, as opposed to when I do the let me bore you to sleep, I just it's just me talking about absolute nothing for an hour. It's, some of it's just absurd, some of it is real, some of it's made up, some of it's just about being boring. But the daily hypnosis sessions, 2018, are uh, very therapeutic. I, I think. But then that's 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 how I feel. But uh, it's about testing it and seeing uh, how you feel. You know how you feel before you listen to me. How you feel during, and how you feel afterwards, and then how you feel an hour later, or the day. You know the day after just you know just seeing how you feel maybe listen every day you can listen to them or you can watch them on YouTube you can uh, listen to them on the SoundCloud podcast everything I do I post it on Facebook so it's available to just click and go to wherever you want to go or you can go to my website jasonnewland.com and everything's on there you can stream download or um, Yeah, or just look at the page, but there would be no point in that. You, you know, so you've got all those different options. Um, so 2000, so 1999, I got through that year. 2000, you know, I saw, I had this thing, I did some hypnosis with my cousin. I should just say a family member. So I did some hypnosis with a family member. And this this family member was very, very, very depressed. And I did some hypnosis and it lasted for about two hours. And she was completely zonked out. She was probably the one of the best subjects I've ever, you know, for hypnosis ever. Because she really went deep. And It seemed to really work for her at that time, so I was quite pleased with that. And um, because I cared so much about her, I really wanted the pain to stop. Now, it sounds kind of obvious, I suppose, but there was that emotional connection that uh, a therapist wouldn't have with a client, and I wanted to. Luckily, I knew a way to do it. Excuse me. Andre's come for a visit. Say hello. So this is Andre the ferret. 
This is Andre Dooley Newland. He's my son. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Hello. He's just been asleep. Aren't you? So I, um, so 2000, I was still studying, but I got really into web, web design. That was my focus pretty much for a year, more so than the hypnosis. Well, I was still in, really into the hypnosis. Web design was my big focus for that year. And I learned how to build websites which helped me a lot when it came to doing the hypnosis stuff online because I knew how to build a website and how to embed players and you know stuff like that so it's quite quite cool Sebastian what do you mean he's become big you only saw him like two days ago it's no bigger than he used to. <laughs> Don't you smell beautiful? I made a video of him the other day, I filmed him. He started going inside the, I posted a video of him going inside one of my kitchen cupboards. Now, he's, he's found his way into another kitchen cupboard. He's a little monkey, he really is. And I filmed him, and at no point, no part of him thinks, "Oh, Daddy's seen me. I better stop. Miss, my, I've got to stop being naughty." Nothing. Just carries on, don't you? Huh? He's very bendy. He's so relaxed. He's happily just go to sleep like that, doesn't care. And you know Claire, that's what I think of, you know, when I think of safety, he feels safe. There's not one part of him, one, one particle of his being that feels unsafe right now. So he's in his safe space, just being here. He can close his eyes and feel safe. And he's basically just balancing on my hands. Which is quite high up for him. You know, compared to... It's like me being above the, the roof. I suppose space-wise. You know, in comparison. But he's relaxed and safe, doesn't need anything, doesn't doesn't have to think about anything. It's kind of, I suppose, a meditative state. And I find it difficult to say meditative. There's too many titatives in that. Look, I can just do it with one hand. He's not bothered, he can go to sleep just like that. <laughs> I don't normally let him onto the uh, hi Diane, I don't normally let him onto the uh, the table, but for today I will. So I was just talking about the hypnosis stuff, how I got into hypnosis. I've moved to 2000, the year, 2001, um, I was still into the website stuff, still, you know, still reading hypnosis books, NLP books, 
but practically hadn't really done anything. You know, I hadn't seen anybody. I was really, uh, Claire says that Andre's the same size as her dog. A teacup Yorkie, I've never heard of a teacup Yorkie before. I've heard of a Yorkie, but not a teacup. So it's hard to, I think it's probably hard, I suppose you can see if I put him next to me, kind of, I'm five foot eight, so I'm not particularly tall, but you can see he's, he takes, with his tail, it's pretty much the whole of my upper body length, from my neck to my willy, pretty much. Aren't you? Yeah. Why is, oh, I'm gonna let him down because I think he's just let off a little bit of wee on my laptop. Yes. I don't know if you can see that. You can see that it's wet. Only a little bit, but uh, still too much for my liking. <laughs> if I'm honest. So what else? I In 2004, I did a, I launched a pain, like free pain relief website in my, uh, local area where I lived and the website was called helpwithpain.com or .net or dot, no net wasn't available back then I think it was .com it might have been .co.uk but help with pain and I built the website advertised this free service but nobody was interested got no interest at all but I did some hypnosis with some other people and uh, uh, I did some, I did, yeah, I did some like relaxation with people, but also in 2003, I did a massage course, a holistic therapy course, which involved reflexology, massage, head, head in Indian head massage. Um, but I didn't finish the course, but I, I finished the massage part and I enjoyed the reflexology part, but I was quite unwell at that point. And I also did a reflexology course in 1995 as well. Uh, so, but then, so 1996, I went to relaunch the free pain relief service in my area, and I gave it a big launch and this time, people were interested for some reason. Started getting phone calls, uh, started seeing people for different, various different pain issues, arthritis. I had a regular person that I saw every week. He was quite elderly, he had really severe arthritis and unable to sleep. And seeing, he told me that seeing him every, once a week was that transforming his life. He was able to sleep had very little pain anymore, able to get around easier. Um, and then other people that I knew started sending me their friends. So I, my very first proper hypnosis session, I didn't get paid, but it was like, and it wasn't to do with pain, was my friend's friend, and she was taking a driving exam to be a driving instructor and she'd always she'd, she'd failed twice so this was her third attempt but it was her last attempt because she wasn't allowed to apply again after that and I, I was with her for about two hours and the next day or two days later she took the exam and passed easily um, I'm not saying it's just because she came and saw me but it was the nerve she had really rather than she had all the knowledge, she had all the skill, she had everything she needed. It was just the, uh, it was the nerves that were getting in the way, which is quite often the way with the reason why people fail those 
tests and stuff. So that was my first real success outside of uh, pain relief. And then she started sending me people for driving. And again, I wasn't charging anything, but she, because once she was an instructor, she started sending her, uh, her students to me. I had a couple of really important points in my time then is there was a lady and I've talked about this before but I guess I'm talking about it right now there was a friend of another friend of a friend and she had uh, basically had to have a lung transplant both her lungs and this was on a Saturday afternoon probably about three o'clock that I went to see her she had oxygen and she you know she's very struggling to breathe and she told me that she had to go to hospital on Tuesday morning to, or Monday morning, something like that, Tuesday I think though, to have tests to see whether or not she was eligible to be put on the transplant list. And she had to be in hospital for a couple of days because it's very intrusive tests, a lot of tests apparently. But she'd attempted to go in a few times and couldn't even walk into the hospital. And they'd given her an ultimatum. They said, if you don't come in this time, we won't offer it to you again. So you won't be able to get a transplant. And well, she needed a transplant. It wasn't, an, you know, wasn't an option. So she was. Re I did all these different things: NLP techniques, hypnosis techniques. Nothing worked. And I finally found the right thing. I can't remember what it was, to be fair. But I found a way in. I found a, a way to relax her. And then I worked from there. And I still got a letter from her that she sent me. It's um, after she, she, she went in on a Tuesday. And she, she wrote about it saying I, had, I actually had fun. Laughed, was laughing with the nurses. And had all the tests successfully and I spoke to her afterwards and she was on the waiting list and then she was she had the operation within about two weeks and so yeah and I went and visited her in Papworth Hospital after her operation and did a bit of like, pain relief with her uh, so yeah so that was that was one of the biggest moments of my hypnosis life really another one was another, well it wasn't a friend of a friend, it was uh, the husband of a friend. I went to my friend's wedding and she was marrying her husband, or, you know, her boyfriend, and he had uh, terminal stomach cancer. And I went along and I gave some free vouchers, a little book, and I wrote on them free hypnosis vouchers for them, for him, either of them to use with me. And I was be a bit tight really I suppose rather than buying a present I thought I'd just give that and um, the amount of people I've offered help to and they've said no so I kind of I don't expect people to take me up on the offer and this was really weird I got a phone call and he although he, had, he didn't even know me he met me at his wedding and that was it it was a couple of weeks later uh, his wife phoned and said he has to have his stomach drained and it's a hot, he, he'd had a really bad experience the last time it was done and he refused to have it done until I visited him in the hospital in the cancer ward and uh, did some hypnosis with him to prepare him for the procedure so I went in I did my thing I did you know and he's you know he he sold for it and the thing about that I know I'm still talking and everything but what happened then the next day I met a friend went for lunch and he told me when I told him about the free hypnosis service that I was doing he said that nobody appreciates anything that's free And from that moment on, 
I realized that but well first of all and I still realize very few people will ever understand why I do what I do why I do it for free but the idea that people don't appreciate it I know that that lady that I saw appreciated it and I know that that man in that hospital bed appreciated it and that was the, that was the day before or the, the e afternoon or evening before and I was like you know what he appreciated it how can you say that people don't appreciate something just because they don't exchange a piece of paper with a number on it you know of uh, numerical value cash value or whatever so then I started thinking I want to expand this I want to do some other hypnosis stuff and I started phoning around charities and I found one a lot most charities just said no not interested I found a charity that was it was an alcohol charity helping people with alcoholism and I started doing these every Monday evening this is probably about April time every Monday evening I used to go there and do probably from half six to nine or half seven to nine something like that and I just I'd host the group and it wouldn't be more than maybe eight maybe ten people and would go through all different things different techniques different you know relaxation but also um, various NLP hypnosis techniques to help them to cope with the not drinking anymore and to moving on with their life and they became quite popular and then they asked me would I be willing to do uh, a relaxation group just relaxation with more people so I started doing that and then a drug rehab center actually asked for me they, they got in touch with me and asked they kind of said would I be we were willing maybe one of the, the clients were going to both but they said would I be willing to do the same thing at their place so I did at a place called I see me and it was a drug rehab and I went there and I started doing relaxation sessions and basically the interview even though it's free it was voluntary I still needed to for me the proof is doing it's actually doing um, Diane just quickly I don't want to ignore comments I know I'm talking a lot but um, Diane says I very much appreciated your YouTube videos they helped me through a very dark time in my life thank you Diane I, I do appreciate that I, I'm just happy happy to be able to help um, and it, it means a lot to hear that as well it's just it's nice to get some feedback as well you know why is he he has to make noise when I'm doing a video what are you doing I think he's trapped inside a box I might have to go over and help him in a minute no he's alright so I Yes, I started working, doing voluntary work. But what I did is in my interview, and they said, "Well, how do we know uh, what you like and what you do?" I said, "Well, let's just do it." So I just got them and a few members of staff, and I just did the hypnosis. Then we close your eyes and let's do a relaxation session. And what happened is, when I did the relaxation sessions any staff that were able to do it came and did it with me because they wanted to not with me they they were part of the the audience you know as it were and in every, nearly every session i did there was usually at least one member of staff sometimes there'd be like five members of staff and when i went part-time because i had a full-time job at this point when i went part-time i started doing more more sessions during the week between the two and I was also uh, nominated for Volunteer of the Year in the 
alcohol charity. I didn't win it, but I was nominated. So that was quite nice. And so, what then? So then people started asking me, they said, well, we listen to you once a week. We see you once a week at this charity. I don't really want him doing that at three o'clock in the morning. Okay, Claire, if you want to hear the rest of this boring story, just remember what number, what time we're at, and you can catch up with me. I don't know what time it is, but um, you can watch it tomorrow or something. So it's just getting to the exciting bit. <laughs> uh, don't leave me with Sebastian. So then what happened is they said to me that some of the people that used to come and see me said, we only see you once a week, that's not enough. Can't you make a, a DVD so that we can listen to you at home? So that's what I did. With the help of the people that run the place, they did the CDs, they printed them out and you know, whatever. But I re started recording my live sessions with a dictaphone and started making DVDs for the clients of both the charities. And they just, they were going, they was like, every time we did like a stack of 20, they'd be gone by the end of the week. So it's, it's you know, they were going, I think um, it was quite cool. And then I thought, you know what? It'd be easier if I started putting them on my website. So I had a website called freepainrelief.co.uk. So I started putting, and I had jasonnewland.com as well. So I started putting the the audios available for people to listen to on my website rather than the DVD, um, the CDs. And that's where the free hypnosis service online came about because I started, I thought, oh, maybe I should share these. Made a video, put it on MySpace, and I had about 10,000 views on that within quite a short time. And and I was only one of a handful of people doing stuff at that time. I didn't even know other people were doing it. So it was like a handful of people online that were, perhaps didn't know there were other people doing that stuff, making hypnosis videos. And I stuck to relaxation, pain relief, and insomnia. Um, although the pain relief is what I was passionate about, but other people were asking me, well, can you do stuff for sleep? because you've got such a boring voice, can't you do more sleep stuff? Which I did. And uh, it grew from there, podcasts. So since 2006, I've had quite a few different YouTube channels, podcasts, had the same website for the whole time, but I keep changing it, getting a different provider. So it's, you know, if, if you clicked on a link from 2006, it would take you somewhere else, it wouldn't take you to my website, you know, take me somewhere else possibly. Um, but fast forward, uh, we had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of downloads of my sessions. Um, I had over a hundred thousand before the beginning of 2008, just on one podcast, which isn't around anymore. So, uh, so I had lots and lots. My last podcast, I had 200,000 downloads, plays before I deleted it, and now I've got another one on SoundCloud. Um, and YouTube, I, I've had a few channels. One channel I had half a million plays, another channel I had a couple of hundred thousand. Uh, I've had a few channels with like 50 plus, plus thousand. And the one I've got at the moment is quite new, and I think I've about 3,000 or something. So it's, you know, it's all, I've uploaded, re-uploaded a lot of the old videos back from, well, I'll give you an example. Someone just posted a comment on one of my old videos and they said, oh, it's so good to see this back. It reminds me of 2012. That's how long ago I posted it. And in fact, I probably posted it 2011. So that's, it's an abbreviated uh, version of what I've got up to. Um, 
I don't know how to explain my techniques. I think it's conversational. It's not traditional. It's just me. Uh, I'm not a different person when I do hypnosis sessions. I'm more focused. Uh, a bit more, probably a lot more aware of the particular words that I'm saying, as opposed to, you know, doing a Jason Chats vlog. There's not a lot more difference. The intention's different. When I'm doing a vlog, you know, just doing a chat, there's no therapeutic value as such. Maybe uh, a communication, maybe some people like to watch vlogs because you feel maybe less alone, uh, feeling that uh, connection, especially if you watch my videos or you listen to my podcasts, you can get a sense that I'm just a human being, just a normal person or normalish, you know. Um, no hidden agenda, no nothing, just, just what you see is kind of what you get, I suppose, in a way. A uh, 48 year old man with a an ever increasingly wild beard. It's gonna get wilder. It is, it's gonna be bushy, proper bushy. Sebastian, I'm glad you interrupted me because I was, I was boring myself. Did you notice, oh, don't keep posting lots of different things. Let me read the first one first. Did you notice something, JJ? I just listened to this and I just listened intentionally and and full attention, okay? And can I give you a bigger compliment? Yeah, go on then. Well, that wasn't really a compliment, was it? You said you listen, that's, well, was it, is that a compliment saying that you listen to me? You know, when you were making that video, I was actually listening to you talking, when you were talking. But what's the bigger compliment I'm interested? I'm waiting now, so I'm just waiting. All these are in the comment section of the uh, Facebook video. Uh, but if you're watching this on YouTube, you can't see the various messages that were posted, which is a shame. So it'd be good to be able to see the comments because then you, it'd make more sense what I'm saying. That's why I try and read out the comments in full before answering them. Otherwise, it don't make no sense. You know, a bit like when, you know, on Facebook, when someone starts an argument in a forum and the other people start arguing back and other people start talking, posting comments, and the person that has started the argument deletes all of their comments and the whole thing doesn't make sense anymore and then but there might be like 300 comments and none of it makes sense because that person who was doing lots of stuff just took it away okay i just sat there and listened to it and it interested me and it was <laughs> enjoyable so sebastian it's the first time you listened to me and it was enjoyable thank you that's nice. Uh, without interrupting me, yes. So that that's it, really. That's that's. I'm partly doing this as an introduction to me, for uh, uh, a new uh, Facebook friend who's uh, been listening to my, downloading a lot of my sessions, and she asked me for a bit about my past and what I'm doing and um, I wasn't sure how to respond in written form. I find it easier to respond verbally than written, if that makes sense. Andre's about to be naughty, I think. No, okay, he's all right. I, um, hello whoever's joined, just weird just chatting about me really it's uh, it's all about me 
It's all about me, baby. I am, that gets rid of everyone, doesn't it? People come on here for like two seconds and then gone. Um, what was I going to say? I, I would like to write a book, possibly many, but I need help. I need help with it. I can't just write a book. Um, and I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of talking recorded. Uh, and I, I don't know where to start with writing a book. Uh, I find it's easier just to talk than to write. I'm not really a writer, I'm a talker. And also sometimes I imagine to get one really good sentence f onto a page would probably be maybe me talking for an hour. You might be able to get, you know, half a page out of that or a page maybe even. So it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's the way I talk, it perhaps is, isn't a way to read, isn't the way people read. Even though I'm not going er, uh, ah, all the time, but then I leave gaps between my words, or between my sentences. Diane says, The Secret Confessions of a Hypnotist. There actually is a book called that. There is, called uh, by Jonathan Royal. I used to have it. Uh, he's one of my uh, instructors, one of my hypnosis instructors. So I had a few different trainings. I forgot to mention that I've, I went to a hypnosis training in 2002, then again in 2003, 2005, 2012, 2000, yeah, so I've had a bunch of a few. So that would be good, secrets of, oh, I can't keep up with all these messages. Will you start at the start? No, it's not that simple. If the key, if the keyboarder from Ramstein wrote two books now, which are highly enjoyable, so can you. It's not, I'm not a writer. I'm not a, like physically, a writer. I'm a talker. If someone could transfer what I say into a book format that is readable, then that would be groovy, you know, that would be really cool. So I could work with somebody with that, but I'm not a writer and I've got an audience. I know I've only got two people watching this, but I've got, I do have a, a fan base that is, but whenever it grows, I seem to sort of delete something so I lose the fan base, but they always come back eventually when they find out where I am. So the YouTube channel sometimes takes people a year to find the new one. But when they do, they stay. So I just need to keep the same YouTube going. And uh, when I closed the YouTube channel, got rid of the podcast, I had a lot more people visiting my website and downloading my sessions from there because that's the only place they could get them. So it's, you know, every day I'm getting people visiting my website and downloading because and they're going there purposely for that. So it's, so it's he, he, neither she or he, either she. Well, we we'll see, I just, so I don't, I don't, I don't write books like fantasy books or uh, fiction. I'm very much, uh, I don't know, like, I don't really want to class it as self-help because the thing is right, when I'm making a session, I'll come out with stuff that sometimes I think is really good, but I don't know where it comes from. Does that make sense? I don't, I'm not saying I think it's good because I'm showing off and I think, oh, I know, wonderful. 
but sometimes I come out with stuff that uh, just feels right and uh, genuine not made up not copied as far as I know it's not copied not purposely and it fits the moment Diane says night my lovelies no no Eb see ya Eb Eb no night Diane uh, I'll speak to you next time I'll see say good night Sebastian Sebastian says maybe you should do a video biography then you burn it onto some DVDs and send those anonymously. To the <laughs> to newspapers, no. No. I've already done quite a few kind of biographical or autobiographical, I forget which is which, you know, the one where you talk about yourself. I've done that before uh, with the Jason chats, different vlogs that I've done, even some of the other sessions. It's only me and you now, Sebastian. We can talk about anything. <gasps> no, we can't. Right, I'm gonna go. I think that's enough for me for one night. So I'll speak to you, no doubt, I'll probably chat to you tomorrow or something not on here but so hi Donna we're just about to end this you've missed the most exciting live stream ever there's been juggling magic uh, that wasn't enough to keep her Sebastian she just left it's like she wasn't interested <laughs> oh dear I do wonder if I actually got rid of the people on Facebook that don't even know who I am. I might only have about 200 friends on there. Oh well. See you later mate. Bye anyone else that's watching. Thank you for watching those that watch after it's been broadcast. And just remember my website is jasonnewland.com and just check, put in Jason Chats vlog into YouTube search engine and you'll find my YouTube vlog channel. And there's about probably 30 or 40 videos on there at the moment. Going all the way back to 2007, I think. Um, but that's it. So I'm gonna just quickly read what Sebastian's written and then I'm gonna go. Remember one book announced that never came, why is it free? And why do they stink so bad? No, why is it free? That is a book that I wanna write. But I think it's gonna, it's turning more into a pamphlet. So yeah, I, the why is it free was just gonna be a, a description of the journey that I've gone through over the last, well, you know, since 2006 with the free online service. But that's it, so we'll see. If there's anyone out there that wants to, that thinks that they can help me uh, to, I'm looking for someone maybe for a long-term venture really who could, who's like a professional, who, you know, who could do something with my recordings and get the best out of them, if that makes sense. And at the same time, make themselves some money and me, you know, in the future, perhaps. There you go. In the meantime, I shall continue to make my sessions. I did one, I released one today. Hi Babette. Uh, oh, you're gone. You noticed uh, Sebastian, that hardly anybody actually says hello. They come on in and just go away. I don't think they realize that their things, pictures coming up when they come on. 
Did I tell you this story where I wrote a book myself? Will you hear that one? It's funny. Send me the message on what's in that. I'll read it another time because I'm going to go now. See you later, mate. Bye, everyone.